and welcome to this episode of Wasting All the Time, Level 3, a podcast. Mm -hmm. My name is Dave, and I am joined by two of my three cohorts, Jess. Hello! Why am I yawning? I shouldn't be yawning. What the hell is going on? <laughs> and John. Hey, I'm, I'm not yawning, but I am very tired. <laughs> what I, the heck? I yawned a few times before we started recording. Oh. It's gonna be oh, good. No. This is the <laughs> promise to you. It portends well. I think that's a word. Anyway, sure. we are going to uh, each of us provide some sort of improvisatory uh, idea or segment or content, as uh, as the kids say. We are nothing if not content creators. We don't care what it is. We don't have any thoughts about. Um, you know, the artistry of it. We just, we just make content. Just churning it out, churning it out. It's a thing that advertisements get attached to mm -hmm. content. Yeah. We have empty heads, no thoughts. No, no thoughts. Head empty. Head empty. Head empty. No I watch a podcast that say it's about the CW show Smallville. So mm. rewatch podcast of it uh, with some of the guys mm. that were on the show. And mm. uh, one of their running jokes has become, ah, oh, yes, the CW, beautiful people, bullshit situations. I feel like. Oh, that's, yeah. That that's describes us. us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I thought I, I thought it would. OK, I am mistaken. I thought it was beautiful situations. Bullshit people. No, <laughs> Some of the people are bullshit. I will. <laughs> I will admit. Very good. So that's what we are going to do. And that is the wasting all the time guarantee. Mm -hmm. We're going to kick things off with a segment from Jess. Okay. It is a predetermined segment. <sighs> Thank the sweet... <laughs> sweet gods above and below and it all in between because there is no free will this podcast is on rails mm. here <laughs> we go <laughs> style it here we go art what you want to know Jess is gonna shape our minds like Play-Doh A to the R to the final T Art's been around since the dawn of humanity Marble, oils, whatever the medium Jess is gonna shout it from on top of the proscenium Grab your notebook and make a note Cause Jess is the best Jess is the go style it all right, what I really want to talk to you about today is how we seem to have lost the art of conversation. People don't really like talk to each other anymore, or it's like every every conversation that I have watched or peered through through like bushes and shadows, they just they keep giving awkwardness and I don't really understand why. And I started to question this uh, heavily until I ran into somebody and they were consciously making an effort to have a conversation with none other than me. And first I was like, whoa, Hold up, buddy. Sorry, friendo. I'm not really a conversationalist. I am somebody who watches things, but I digress. Let us continue said conversation. And at first, I was mildly offended until they turned to me and they're all like, hey, you know what? You are definitely giving cozy mouse in a sweater vibes. And I just want to hang around you this entire time. And I'm all like, thank you. And that's the thing. That's when I realized that that is the thing that we are missing consistently out of the art of conversation. We are not like honestly telling people what they're giving off, okay? So like, I'm talking about when you're trying to be kind and courteous and be all like, I really enjoy your outfit. I think that what you just did with paying for your own meal, that was admirable because a lot of people won't try to do that. But at the same time, I think it's really important that we also point out that, hey, you're a BOS and you're a terrible person that's not treating this person correctly. You're definitely giving sad struggles peaked in college vibes, so maybe stop it. And I think that stop. the art of conversation would be just so much better if we just told people what they're given. Word. Jess dropped the mic. Mm -hmm. It was very That's expensive. Expensive, yeah. yeah. I know. I, I keep breaking mics. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. It's just 
you know, it's not that likely that we're going to keep inviting you back to the studio. It's uh, just, just put off this kind of property destructive sense of, you know, ah. It's I don't just, want to it's pigeonhole part, you, but. It's part of the performance. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, we could, we could get you a, a dummy mic. Yeah, yeah. A prop mic. We could even rig it to like really like shatter when it hits the ground. Oh, okay. Um, roar for a dummy I think, mics. I think my fans, I think my fans really like the authenticity. Mm-hmm. You do because give everything off about big, me is authenticity. You do give off big authentic vibes. That is true. Yep. I mean, that's why the people keep coming, right? That's mm-hmm. why people show up for your your performances. Yeah, yeah. That's why all they have to do is see the sign, and it says Millie from the Willy Villy, and they know. They know. There's authenticity. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. That's me, Millie yep. from the Willy Villy. Yep. Millie for real. Yep. And it's true. That's why we want to... <laughs> Try to find a way for you to still actually be able to drop a microphone. Right, exactly. Without it costing, you know, three to six hundred dollars uh every time. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes, 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 yes. I agree, I agree. We should probably cut but counterpoint, couldn't we just charge more money? Well, yes, we could. We could charge more money. Um well, Don't you could. just have more money? Just get more. Just, just get more. Just get more money. Okay. Yes. So just get more money. Sure. Millie, your shows have been consistently uh underselling as it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I like to say that's exclusivities. That's exclusivity. Yes, yes. Uh, Big <laughs> exclusive vibes from your shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, a lot of lot of empty seats. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I still feel like maybe we should have booked uh, small clubs instead of um, several stadiums in a row. <clears throat> um, it was tough to find that many stadiums in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I needed I needed them to be perfectly lined up in a row. It's very important. Yeah, yeah. the the ley line thing, right? Yes, yes. It can't be authenticities if the ley lines do not line up properly. Right, without stadium syzygy, you said. Yes, yeah, without yeah. stadium syzygy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, we did our part. We held up our end of the bargain. Are you, are you accusing me of not holding up my end of the bargain? No, just asserting that we did. Right. I see things in black and white. And if you're saying that you held up the end of the bargain, then you're also saying that I did not hold up the end of the bargain. And I, I don't think that that is very authenticity of me. Okay, so um, here's the thing. You see things so, in black and white? I'm seeing a lot of I'm, fucking red here right now, okay? As in red ink right. from well, the expenses here. I did, put, I did here. put a bunch of red Millie, ink on the walls. I'm, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but I can't anymore, okay? We are mm-hmm. hemorrhaging money. Hemorrhaging oh. money on this tour. It's so, it's okay. so bad. It's oh, so Bob. bad. Hey, We're, Bob. Oh. Hey, Bob, you're, you're giving off real oh. desperation vibes right I, now. Because I'm yes. desperate. Yes, so did she. Oh, it took it's, me. You're, we, I don't even know how we're going to pay the crew for the next show. Yeah, Millie, you know how you're saying just find more money? That's that's yes. That's just what the banks more. that's what the banks have been saying to Bob. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a good idea then if the banks are saying it too. Yeah, it's just they want us to find more money for them. Uh cuz uh, we're out. Uh, yeah, uh, kind of. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, we're kind of giving off insolvent vibes, generally speaking. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, would you so, consider the dummy mic? I mean, we're just looking for some sort of. Right. As long as it sounds authenticated, as much as 
my devoted fans need it to sound, I can acquiesce the request. I talked with all 12 of your fans and they're fine with it. Okay. Then let's, let us, let us pour this down. Up, pour it up. Let's pour it up. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's cut expenses and make some money here. Let's pour it up. We're saying the I same I don't know thing. what that means. I, I just. Going to pour. I don't. I have no idea what any of this fucking means, Billy. You're giving, you're definitely giving the vibes of a desperate person. That's. <laughs> Definitely what's happening here. He's got Good, you there, because Bob. That's, that's what I'm trying to give off. Am I... I am adequately expressing myself, then, in it's that case. The, the authenticity... 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 Numerous. Fine. We'll continue to pour up the entire <laughs> trip and tour. I don't want costumes anymore. Just give me paper towels. Yeah. I will tape them to my body with scotch tape. In fact, don't use lights. Let's get little LED flashlights and we'll use those instead. In fact, in fact, I don't think we need a stage. No. Just give me a little box, a little cardboard <laughs> box. I don't stand on it. Mm, mm-hmm. We're going to pour it up in here. Yes. And I'm just going to pull out my phone and you go ahead and work through your set while we're here just to get a little extra rehearsal in. And I will record your set and then our part of the tour will be done. And we can just email the video to your 12 fans. Bob, cancel the stadium reservations. Okay. He's, he's Bob, cancel the every, yes, every single studio reservation must be canceled. And instead of to continue pouring down, but raising the authenticity tees, tees, we will perform in parking garages. Perfect. Next to the I, I love this plan. I feel like you're probably trying to make me feel guilty or or you're being passive aggressive, but no, this is no, a great plan no, and I'm writing no, it all this down. It's a great plan. This the acoustics are great plan. in those. The, the, the bounces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Bounces. We can take a hose and we can just hose down the garage after. The litany of animals that go traipsing through it for the big number. I talked to the zoo. Mm -hmm. They gave off big rejection vibes. No! (laughs) Why? I watched one thing and it was to be surrounded by emus and ostriches. Yes, word got back to them about uh, the barbecued emu at the last show. That was one time, and it was one light, and it was... It was one fan. You let it happen, Millie. You encouraged it once it started. I... Okay, okay. I yes, baby. I did put an apron on the fan, yep. and I did, I did put an apron on the emu, and yep. I gave them both spitulas and told them to, to spitul to the death. And yes, maybe the emu did succeed and is now a murder emu. But but. That's authenticity. Yeah. You did give off real big go ahead and roast the emu vibes. But she wasn't roasted. The zoos don't really care. I'm sorry. Yeah. (laughs) This is. 
Could we? All I, all I ever wanted was to be authenticity, Teed. Ah, geez, Millie. Look, I know a guy who manages a movie theater. And he keeps all the cardboard cutouts. I can ask him if he's got anything from Jumanji. (gasps) This would be perfect. It would be pouring it up. That would be pouring it up. It'd be pouring it up. Be big pouring it up. (laughs) Vibes. (laughs) Oh my God. I hate that person. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, that was Style It. Thank you for sharing that, Jess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move things on to the next segment now, which in this case belongs to John. Ooh! John. Okay, well, I have brought us something we haven't done in quite a while. It used to be one of my regular segments, and it is called What's Weird in the World? What's weird? Amateur archaeologists uncover a mysterious ancient Roman artifact in England. A group of amateur archaeologists in England were on their second to last day of excavation last June when they discovered a find of a lifetime, a mysterious ancient artifact called a dodecahedron at a possible Roman site. A dodecahedron (gasps) is a circular copper alloy object between the size of a golf ball and a grapefruit characterized by its 12-sided form with various holes and knobs. Jess seems to know about this. <laughs> but its function remains unclear. Even though more than 100 have been found across Europe, the organization behind the latest find describes the dodecahedron as one of, quote, archaeologists' great enigmas. That's largely because there are no known visual or written descriptions of dodecahedra in Roman literature, says the group's website. According to Lorena Hitchens, a doctoral student in the UK studying all the Roman dodecahedra of Egypt, there are many unproven theories about the dodecahedron's use. As a gauge, a rangefinder, a candlestick, a die for gambling or gaming, or knitting gloves, for example. She says that none of these theories are supported by evidence. A huge amount of time, energy, and skill was taken to create our dodecahedron, so it was not used for mundane purposes, reads the Norton Disney website. They say that this object was most likely used for ritual and religious purposes. (laughs) Quote, Roman society was full of superstition, something experienced on a daily basis, continues the website. A potential link with local religious practice is our current working theory. More investigation is required, though. What makes this latest discovery unique is not only that the object was found fully intact in excellent condition, but also that it is the only example uncovered in the central region of England known as the Midlands. Most of the found dodecahedra have been discovered in bits. Additionally, it was found, quote, where it was put deliberately 1,700 years ago for whatever reason, says Richard Parker, secretary for Norton Disney. Many of the known examples are divorced from their find context, having been prized by collectors since the 18th century at least, says Hitchens. There was a lot of horse trading of these objects in the Victorian era and poor record keeping. The archaeological group revealed the discovery in a BBC archaeology program called Digging for Britain earlier this month. It is currently on display at the National Civil War Center at the Newark Museum in England. The Norton Disney Group will return to the excavation site this year to find out more about the circumstances surrounding this dodecahedron. So the thing I had had seen was how they're like, we can't figure out what this is. And it's like every single crafter is like, uh, bro. (laughs) 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 Like, it's still it's still like a tool used today, basically. Oh, nice. So the fact they're like, there's no substantial evidence of this. And I'm like. (laughs) so what what's, is it the knitting what, thing the then thinking? uh well i mean that i would have to see but um 
that was like one of the big things that uh, the knitting community was like, bruh, they use these to this day to quickly <laughs> knit things. Oh, wow. So it would make sense why like it would be found on trade routes and stuff. Mm. But mm. Mm. I'm telling you. It was aliens. Uh, I just don't know about that old chap. I feel like the alien aliens. thing is played out, isn't it? It's, they're aliens, and they're making our tea. Right. Aliens. Well, uh, look, I just, uh, you can't keep referring to Sri Lankans that way, all right? It's just. I'm not, I'm not, a, Benjamin, I ain't talking about Sri Lankans. I'm talking about the reason this entire world has tea. Right, it's, it's because they grow it in Sri Lanka it. and export it to various countries around the world. It, it, they use boats. It, it, Benjamin, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there. They use boats, Philip. You're not, but Benjamin, I've stopped you. You've been. I put my hand up, and now I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this child of truth thought walk by the crosswalk first and that yeah, truth yeah. is that you're not thinking back far enough humans would not have been smart enough to figure out they could drink leaves so you know who who brought it to us you know who did it aliens rest my case get me the pulitzer yeah so um I just so the, there was never any time when perhaps leaves from the tea tree fell into a vessel of water, infusing it, and someone drank it because it was a vessel of water. They said, "Oh, oh my, this is lovely what these leaves have done to this water in the vessel." Never. I feel as though that is when I when I cook a pot of water, I do not leave it open to the elements, Benjamin. I am a I am a sane person, a hundred percent sane person. Okay. The only explanation is aliens. I feel like we've. I, I feel like I've given a, a different explanation that is perfectly credible. Uh, that is not aliens. Um, however, uh, if you'd like me to give perhaps a different example of something else. No, no, no I, I just want you to make your move. Tea right now, perhaps make your we move should do on the pyramids or, or um, you know. I... Oh, God, no, no, the, the pyramids were not aliens. That's ridiculous. Oh, dear, Reginald. I think you've, you've both made your statements. It's a compelling case, of course. And... Uh, I think that I have a third perspective that will really just pull things into sharp relief. You see? Wonderful, Reginald. What is your third perspective? Is always so illuminating. Yes. Well, I I do believe that the idea that these tea leaves could have fallen into a vessel of potable water and thus affixing its qualities upon the water in an accidental manner is entirely plausible. I think that it is uh, without need of an extraterrestrial explanation. Uh, I think that it's very distinctly possible that uh, alias, sorry, Sri Lankans did uh, develop tea on their own. But you see, it's the Boating thing. I think the aliens brought the boating technology. Otherwise, the Sri Lankans couldn't possibly have been smart enough to build these seagoing vessels and transport things around the world. Uh, you sound simply mad. Had to be aliens. Aliens invented boats, then. Reginald, A that's aliens invented boats. That's... Yes. Reginald, that's... 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 Staggeringly racist, I would say. Yeah, I, I would say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that. I don't think so, no. I mean, just look Are at them. Sure? They're so yeah. big no, and sure. heavy. 
No, there's no way that would float unless someone had technologies beyond the wildest imaginations of ancient. I human. believe in human ingenuity, and I believe that our brains are built for architecture and problem solving. Okay, and to get from point A to point B requires to solve a problem, and I believe that humans can do that. All right. Uh, we can build boats. We built the pyramids. We built the Strait of Gibraltar. Okay. <laughs> but I'm saying that we could never in a million billion years could humankind invent tape. Never would have happened. I bet you. I bet you. I bet. You know what? I bet you. I'll wager. The only reason we have tea is because aliens sent their who's a what's it organic bits from other planets and they yes. hit our planet. It's not even supposed to be here. So you're saying that hmm, tea itself is an alien. It, you know, I, I, I wasn't, but now I, I am now. Thank you. I'm trying to think of any other leaves on the planet Earth that I would drink. Yeah, it does seem to be uh, one of a kind. And it makes sense that if the aliens were traveling from place to place out in space, where, of course, it is always nighttime, they would be tired and they would need some sort of stimulant to keep them awake at, the, at the controls as they fly their boats around. So, um... Pertaining to the um, not drinking any other leaves, um, perhaps you are forgetting the dozens of various herbs that are in leaf form that are used in preparing various soups and broths, which are indeed drunk no. every day by aliens. throughout the world. Brought by aliens. Basil, aliens. parsley, aliens. sage, uh, aliens. thyme, no. aliens. marjoram. Oregano. Aliens. Aliens. I, I disagree. I, 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 I appreciate the your, your consistency Rosemary. on both of your sides here. One of there is no alien interactions and the other one of, of course, it's all aliens because of the all nature. Aliens. It makes sense. You're both being consistent. However, I am going to have to disagree on a technicality. I do not drink soup. I eat soup. And that's as simple as it can be. Are you going to make your move, bowls. Benjamin? This is a weird way to stall losing a game of checkers. I'm just saying. But we did agree that I would mediate your discussion. Well, that's true. Am I no longer needed? Um, oh, perhaps not. King me. Oh, you forgot about the double jump. Well, fuck. <laughs> Ding. <coughs> Aliens. <laughs> well, that's what's weird. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Dodecahedron's alien, alien tech for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move things along to the final segment of the show, which belongs to me. Hey. That's right. I'm Dave. This is my segment. I was inspired by John and his segment. Oh. So I decided to bring back something of my own. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> what? That's right. This a is a school episode. Yeah. What? What day is it? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> This episode is coming out on February 15th, which according to nationaldaycalendar.com makes it National Wisconsin Day. Oh no! Whoa. Why? <laughs> on February 15th, National Wisconsin Day recognizes the Badger State. Rich in copper, lead, forest, and fertile farmland, Wisconsin became the 30th state on May 29th, 1848. In 1634, French explorer 
Jean Nicolette was the first European to reach Wisconsin while seeking a Northwest Passage to China. A mining boom, not fur trading, led to the nickname the Badger State. According to oral history, the miners burrowed into the hillsides, much like badgers, for shelter, instead of setting up more permanent homesteads. The first wave of settlers to the area also began the uprooting of the Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Chippewa, Menominee. and other indigenous people. Thank you, Jess. Early in Wisconsin settlement, dairy production began to take root. By the turn of the century, the state became known for its dairy farms and synonymous with cheese. Mining, dairies, and breweries grew one after the other. An influx of German immigrants in the 1850s brought a new brand of dreamers. Brewers cropped up across Wisconsin, satisfying the thirst of the Badger State. As with brewers in other regions of the country, the 18th Amendment in 1919 prohibiting alcohol drowned out much of the competition, leaving only a handful after the legislation was repealed in 1933. From Lake Michigan to Superior and numerous rivers and lakes in between, Wisconsin offers ample opportunity for water recreation and sport. There are also year-round trails perfect for summer hiking or substantial snow for winter activities. How to observe National Wisconsin Day. Better Discover a taste of Wisconsin. What? Join National Day Calendar what? as we explore the 30th state's history, people, and culture. Read about these hyperlink five things Wisconsin is known for. Oh, other no. than cheese. Oh, God. Uncover and travel Wisconsin with all her hidden treasures and amazing landscapes. Use hashtag National Wisconsin Day to share on social media. Why, is, why was one of them just taste Wisconsin? Like. That's how you observe. <laughs> you discover a taste of Wisconsin. I don't even know what that means. Like, what does that even mean? Look, advertising is, it's about emotion. You know, it's about making a connection with the viewer, right? So I don't know that I really need to explain what it means so much as it makes people feel things. Right? So discover a taste of Wisconsin. Just the words themselves sound good they are evocative people know what things what tasting is like right people know what wisconsin is 30th state thank you uh and so what what, what would that taste like what would the badger state taste like yeah that people so want to know i'm gonna go ahead and uh, suggest that we don't make it taste like badger uh but uh i do think um you know, we got some good cheeses up here, mm -hmm. uh, cheese curds. Uh, you know, those California guys have uh, been really trying to hammer us on that, but uh, I think our cheese is better. Good, good. So uh, maybe something with cheese, taste the cheese. Yeah. You know, we actually, we got some pretty good, uh, got some pretty good wineries coming up around, around here too, especially oh, yeah. in the southern part of oh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. those are pretty good. Yeah. And And the cheese goes with the wine. It does. It really goes with the wine. And you would think that we would have, you know, put the put two and two together sooner. But, you know, you, once you get there, you get there. And until you get there, you're not there yet. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, until the global warming started, um, you know, it was kind of too cold to grow the grapes here. So uh, but uh, yeah, but I mean, I mean, that's, you know, they figured out how to do it out there in a brown town and stuff. So mm -hmm. and figure yeah. it out other places. So we got the cheese. We got the wine. Those are things you can taste. Do we do chocolate? We do chocolate, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know, they don't uh, they don't want you to know this in San Francisco out there or nothing. But uh, we got fantastic lavender out here, too. Oh, yeah. But, you know, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. betcha. Lavender is good. We could we the taste of Wisconsin could be some um, some uh, lavender infused cheese. Yeah. With some. Uh, some wild woodland violet wine or something, you know, that could work. I think. Yeah. So these are things Too that formal? people could taste. 
comes yeah. in Wisconsin. He used to have really taste these things. Yeah, which is why I'm kind of confused, I guess, because my slogan kind of encompasses all of that. So I don't know why you feel the need to sort of call out. Well, because your slogan uh, said Wisconsin, put it in your mouth. Uh huh. And that's a little, um, I think that's a little abrasive, don't you well, think? You know, and no, and I, I don't want people coming here and like, oh, okay. like grabbing a fistful of dirt from, you know, the land and trying to, trying to taste that, you know. You know, the, somebody not? did that over at, at Dan, Dan Singer's house. Oh yeah. yeah. The, 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 he doesn't count. Yeah, He's from Dimbola. Illinois. Well, I mean, yeah, but I, I mean, Dan's, it, it was on Dan's property and Dan's well, side. Yeah, you know, yeah, but I mean, it, it was he, just an Illinois por- person. Did you know, that, he's you know. a fib, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to evoke like a childlike wonder here. And uh-huh. that's uh-huh. how do little kids experience the world, but through their mouth, right? Okay. Pick up a thing, they put it in their mouth. So Wisconsin, put it in your mouth. What about if we do something with a cow? Kids like cows. Oh yeah, they let, they love to moo at them. Mm-hmm. And cows, you They're get the cheese. Uh, you get the milk chocolate. They eat the lavender sometimes. You know they do. Yeah. Like there could be any number of things we could do. So many. There's so many ideas. But why? Why not mine? Yeah, you know. You, you, know, you know. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right. right. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to, I don't mean to step on your toes or anything. You know, I just, um, we just want to make sure that, you know, it's, it's a good fit for everybody. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like I won the contest. I should, my, my idea should. It was a job application. Yeah. And my uncle put in a good word for me. Yeah, Gary said you came very highly recommended. Oh yeah, Gary really liked how you how you handled the uh, the one charity event a few weeks back. Mm-hmm. The, what was that one called again? Though I can't remember. It was, was it the Badger Q. Oh, the Badger Q. Yeah. Yeah, we um, we roasted a badger after a fight, and you know I didn't know. Badgers could cry, but you really gave it to them there. Yeah. I was you roasted me or the, him good. It was yeah. 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 You know what? Uh, I think I think the badger knew that it was coming from a place of love. And so I really uh I really opened up, you know, really let it out. Yeah. Oh. And that's fun. <laughs> yeah, you know what else is fun? Uh is uh is cows. Cows is fun. You ever think that maybe we just like go too heavy on the cows once in a while? I don't know. Cows like are could pretty be heavy on their own, don't you? The Dells. Hmm? Sorry. Hmm? Sorry. Huh? I mean, cows are pretty heavy on their own. You know. You know. You yeah. Don't have... Yeah, but I'm. I'm just. I'm sorry. They, they're even heavier in groups. In a herd, yeah. I'm just saying, like we got the Dells. And that's gorgeous. That oh, can, yeah. That's real nice. Mm-hmm. That's real nice area. Yeah, but you can't like eat wilderness. a Dells, you know. You can't eat the Dells. No, you cannot. You could, though. Like, you, put it in your mouth. Okay. You can um, put you know, the fish in the Dells in your mouth. You that's know, true, yeah. You go fish it. Yeah. That's, you know, you could do that. Get a good cod. <sighs> Everything I say just meets with such resistance we're just trying to make we're trying to take your ideas and make them into something that works you know that's all we're trying to do we think you've got a good idea and i'm sorry if you know we're stepping on your toes a little bit here but we're just trying to iron it all out so not just you can enjoy it but aunt gladys can you know get a shirt buy a shirt at one of the the tourist places and be proud to wear it, you know, and not think that she's part of some weird inside cult. Do you want Aunt Gladys to be wearing a shirt that's just the shape of Wisconsin and it says, put it in your mouth? I think it would sell. I, I mean, do. I genuinely do. And, you know, 
It worked when I was in Illinois. So wait, Illinois? Wait. Oh no. Carl, you know? did we hire the same did we bring on board the same guy that did that new slogan? Oh no. For Illinois. So you heard about, about it. <sighs> yeah. The- Illinois. Smells good, don't it? You know, it would be a it would be a good slogan for him if you know if they didn't the, stink the south yeah the southeast side of chicago didn't smell the way it smelled you know yeah kind of kind of burns sulfury. it down sulfury yeah really messes with you well they made the shirts shirts did sell though i saw those uh i saw those reports i did see those reports carl oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. they they dumped the shipment and then they sure they were all over eBay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think they gave a bunch well, of them you know, to like kids in Africa and stuff. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Agnes and Agnes would like a shirt. That's just a giant shape of Wisconsin. And it says, put it in your mouth. Yeah, I but mean, it, it's not like it's Florida. Well, it's true. Yeah. But uh, Aunt Agnes is already in a cult. Thing. Oh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> That was the podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Mm. Couple of mm-hmm. uh, a couple of throwback segments from the good old days, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, and Jess's style it segment. Yeah. So style it, which included a rap. If there was anything in particular that you enjoyed about this episode, let us know about it by going to wastingallthetime.com slash vote. At the end of the year, we will take all of the scenes that were submitted to that uh, forum and we will use it to put together a list of the top 10 voted on by you, our dedicated listening audience. So until next time, when we will do more improv shenanigans, I have been Dave. I've been Jess. And I've been John. And we wasted all the time. Thanks ever so much. (laughs) Porch. Goodbye. Good night, folks. Congratulations. You've made it to the end of another episode of Wasting All the Time an improv comedy podcast. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. If you really enjoyed the show, support us at patreon.com slash timewastepod or go to wastingallthetime.com. That sounds like some Lovecraft shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Baby Lovecraft. Lovecraft There's a cartoon. Baby. <laughs> That's Lovecraft, baby. Lovecraft, baby, Lovecraft. <laughs> Lovecraft, baby, Lovecraft. Uh, Gather around, kids. <laughs> Thank you, I see. Yeah. Cthulhu. Yep. Uh, Lovecraft, he's a racist old guy that... Wrote some scary stories. <clears throat> good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking in my head. But then I said, <laughs> baby Lovecraft. And I thought, oh, Saturday morning cartoon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to I want to watch the crossover episode where baby Lovecraft ran into Rugrats. Or. What or the original crossover is when Baby Lovecraft ran into the Baby Muppet Babies, you know. Uh huh. Before, before they before went insane. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're in closer locations, so it's like if you had a master of anything. Yeah. Like you have people who are like very skilled at something, and they're in close proximity with one another. Naturally, things are going to like just kind of be better. Mm-hmm. Because like of community, whereas was got or whereas California is just 
it's bigger. There's more people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. concentration is going to be less. Just makes uh, kind of sense. But, I'm a jack mm-hmm. of no trades, master of anything. Jack of no trades, master of any. That's not. Is, that's not how the. That's yeah, not he, how that. It's a malpropism. I John. John's face is mostly covered up for by a microphone for me, but the mouth had such a shape of disgust. (laughs) 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 It truly brought meaning to my entire day. So thank you both. Welcome.